Hello and welcome to Bristol Reptile Emporium's YouTube channel. I'm Gail and I'm Michelle and today we are going to talk about live food. So Michelle, what is live food? Live food is the term that we use when we refer to insects that we use for feeding other animals. Okay and how many different types of live food are there? Um, there's probably in the region of, I would estimate, probably about 12 common different species that are used but primarily three to well three to four different species that are like most heavily used within the hobby okay and uh, we've got a few here then yeah so this is, is a selection of different live food that's commercially bred so these aren't bred by shops normally we use wholesalers they produce it on a large quantity for us um, and we order in on a regular basis what we require so at bristol reptile emporium we order uh, we have two deliveries of live food a week uh, to make sure that our live food is as fresh as possible to supply our customer base Okay, and what live food do we have here? So we have a mixture, these are the more mainstream live foods. You will hear of people using some different um, items as well, um, which it all to, it's all to do with availability and how easy it is for stuff to be bred. Mm -hmm. So things that hobbyists can breed easily but don't transfer into a large commercial sense, that's where those sorts of items you, you won't see so commonly in store basically. But what we've got here, we've got locusts and they come in, a, all of the live food comes in a selection of different sizes mm -hmm. and those sizes are just different points within that group of animals um, growth rate basically so obviously when we're feeding our animals we need to be mindful that we offer food that is relative to them and isn't too big and they can feed off of it right too much of a problem so you'll see we've got locusts of different size we've got mealworms and morios of different sizes as well things like calcium worms wax worms for really small stuff, we do things like bean weevils and fruit flies, things like that too. Also things like the small crickets. And then this section here is mostly crickets and we've also got some um, cockroaches thrown in the mix too. Okay, so we've got quite a variety here. Uh, why do we use uh, such a variety of live food? Well, if you think about animals in the wild and what their diet would be made up of, uh, so a predatory animal that eats insects would eat a massive array of food. I mean, if you compared it to us, obviously we're, we're omnivores, so we have a really wide selection of live food. Mm. But with seasonal change and things like that, we should eat food, different types of foods at different times of the year. Now this is, um, you know, the same principle for the animals that we're feeding. So they would be feeding different types of live food at different times of the year when there's abundance of those animals naturally. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. And what uh, type of reptiles would eat this live food? Uh, so this like is across the board, basically. Um, so lots of the beginner species will feed off of these types of um, items. So like your bearded dragons, your leopard geckos, um, also things like cresties. You'll hear us mention these types of live food in the other videos that we've produced. Um, and these are for our really these are the beginner species that we recommend. And then obviously you've got more specialist species as well, um, which will take different types and may get bigger. So they may need li larger items of live food, so things like boss monitors. A lot of the monitor species like to have a wide uh, selection of um, live food, things like tegu, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there is a whole host of animals that will feed off of um, live food. Okay, so as our, our reptile grows, and you said there's different stages and different sizes of um, the live food, presumably you, what you would feed a small or a, a juvenile or a baby bearded dragon would be a different type of food or size food that you would feed to an adult. Yeah, so because in captivity we've only got a limited range of food, it might not be a different type of food. And we are fairly lucky within the UK with our availability. Most of this food is available all year round. You may find that with things like mealworms, availability is affected. But yeah, what we're doing is we're going up through the cycle. So if you were to have something that, for example, say we use a beardy, for example, because it's a common pet mm -hmm. um, and it, you know the principles apply. So when a beardy comes out of the egg, there's no way it's going to eat the same size food as what it's going to eat as an adult. And in turn, obviously, we need to increase the size food as it grows. Because yeah. obviously, we're otherwise, if we're feeding a beardy that's six to eight weeks old, the same size food when it's 14 to 18 weeks old, you're going to need to put so much mass of food in to fill it up. Um, it's not going to get enough. So what we're doing is we're compensating for that by not having to put absolute tons of food in we're putting less food in of a bigger item uh, but we're still bearing in mind that we don't want to go up to like the biggest stage live food mm. so a beardy of uh, 14 15 weeks wouldn't be feeding on extra large locusts 
but depending on how it does feed it, it may be taking you know medium or getting ready to be introduced to something a little bit bigger than that in comparison okay that makes sense uh, so you get a tub of this live food you've got it home now you're not going to give all of this to your reptile at once it's going to be sort of like a few days or worth or or um how, depending on the size of the animal and how many's in the in the in the tub but in that meantime how do we look after these to make sure that they do survive that length of time so the joy of keeping reptiles is especially if you've got an insectivore you get you get two pets basically <laughs> so <laughs> you've got the pet that you actually intended and you wanted to have whether it be a bearded dragon leopard gecko and then you get the live food too um, and some people take the approach where they walk in store they buy what they want they go home they feed it and that's how they do it okay. it's not a very effective way of doing it because the these animals can consume quite a volume of live food. So um, what you'll see, and you'll see it on our, um, if you subscribe to the channel, you will have seen that we've done a product review on a cricket keeper. And that's, it's these types of products that we can use to help maintain our live food, basically. So cricket keepers are good and are designed for crickets, but the same principles can apply for things like mealworms and um, the locusts, where we keep them into a, we transfer them into a larger container. We provide them with more space, we keep them within the right temperature bracket. Mm -hmm. So things like locusts and the crickets, they like to be quite warm. Whereas things like mealworms, if we keep them fairly warm, we speed up their life cycle because this is just part of a life cycle for these animals. That's not yeah. them done. They're going to pupate into beetles. And if we keep them too hot, that's going to happen faster. Oh, right. So we need to understand our live food a little bit to keep it at optimum conditions to make sure that A, it's full of nutrients when we're passing it into our animal for them to eat, because mm -hmm. you are what you eat. So if they've not had any food, they're going to be empty. And again, you're going to need to feed more to compensate for it. Um, and in turn, we just need to be aware um, that we want to keep them hydrated because life food is a great way of providing hydration for our animals too. So again, we need to be thinking about how we're providing that. Okay, so you talk about hydration. How would we do that? How would we give hydration to these animals? So again, you may have heard or seen in a lot of the other videos us talk about in invertebrates and the fact that we don't provide large volumes of water for invertebrates. The reason being is how they take in oxygen is different to us. And if they fall in or become submerged in water, they will drown quite quickly. And again, you don't want to be spending loads of money out on live food just to have it drown in a water bottle. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> it's a real false economy. Um, so what we do, some of the hydration will be coming from fresh veg, and then some of it will be coming from things like jelly pots and also um, hydration balls and hydration gels as well. Um, so when I started keeping reptiles as a kid, how we did it was we used to have a small container, some cotton wool in, and hydrate that with water uh, but obviously we've learned from that that it's not great if obviously your live food eats that fibrous material mm. which they can do <laughs> she's looking at me like i'm weird this is old school right <laughs> <laughs> so that's not great we've moved on from that now good uh, and now we're using things like the hydro jellies and the hydro balls which the in insects can chew on they can stand on it they won't become submerged in it and it it provides hydration for them okay and uh, so that's how we provide hydration you touched on some sort of food did we put any food in with these Okay, so when you get your live foods, a lot of them you'll see they have like a bran in the bottom. Um, so a lot of the live foods will take in uh, some of this bran as fiber in their diet, especially things like the mealworms because they're a grain, they come from a grain beetle. So it is part of their diet. They will consume it quite quickly, basically. Yeah. So there are products available on the market which has this element in it and you can use it to help with the fiber, but that doesn't want to be their sole food source at all. And as I say, there are other prepared um, items, so things like jelly pots. Um, we're flashing pictures up on these guys so that you can see what they are if you've never heard of them. As I say, we're aware that this is a lot of introductory and we want to make sure you guys are comfortable with the terms that we're using. Um, so um, beetle jellies are primarily um, water based, but they've also got some sugars and things like that in them, which help to, with hydration too. And then the hydro jellies and the, the balls are just water. There's nothing else in those. Okay. Um, but we can use a mix of everything and then also we can use if you've got a bearded dragon and you're providing a fresh food for them in their diet which you should be fingers crossed you are anyway <laughs> um, the food that you're feeding to those to these animals we can also introduce into the um, live food 
to and the supplements that you're providing for your animals um, to help with their bone density and things like that you can give to these guys also and then that helps to, with the residual layer levels as well so it's all about building up so it's adding all the time is there a time that you wouldn't use this life food for any reason um, we just need to be mindful. If an animal isn't in very good condition, um, we may not offer live food in the way that we traditionally have. So um, everybody feeds differently. You'll read on social media, you'll see on forums that some people like to introduce it for a period of time and then take it out and things like that. And it just depends on the condition of your animal. If you have an animal that needs support uh, because it's you know it's gone through a life stage where it's struggling a little bit, you know, and ill health does happen with these animals. It's not, they're not gonna be fit and healthy all the time. We might need to be mindful and maybe reduce back the size of the live food or give a different type of live food, which is gonna make it easier for your animal to catch it. Okay. So what would you do if your animal wouldn't eat live food? So in an ideal world, all our animals would feed on what we perceive as the correct diet. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I'm aware that we don't live in an ideal world and uh, nine times out of ten, an animal will become fussy. Um, so in, especially in the case of bearded dragons, they're notorious for playing their owners. Um, so <laughs> they are just like us. They will manipulate people if they think they can get away with it, okay? Everybody laughs when I say it, but beardies are the worst when it comes to this, okay? So beardies are particularly fond of things like waxworms which are good, but they do contain quite a high fat content, okay? So they should be something that are fed quite sporadically because we don't want to have an overweight animal. This is something we see quite commonly is overweight animals in captivity because there's a lot more food available than there ever would be in the wild. Mm. Plus they don't have to work to get it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, so with this in mind, animals can become quite fussy as to what type of food is they want to eat. Um, so sometimes a bit of tough love may be required right. <laughs> and this is literally where you provide food and if they don't eat it out of their choice, that's their choice not to, to eat it. As long as you're given the, the option to eat it and you know there's nothing physically wrong health wise and this is all a mental game of will as to who's going to win. <laughs> then you can play hardball with them. Okay. <laughs> but obviously we would say that if it, if it happens for a prolonged period of time, vet checks should be taken into account and we want to ensure that um, we are providing a diverse range of food. So it's normally not so much a case of my animal won't eat live food. Mm -hmm. It's normally a case of my animal's particular and the type of live food <laughs> it likes to eat. Right. And if this is the case, um, then it's just a bit of man manipulation. Right, basically. okay. Like you said, a little bit of tough love, get them around. Like yes, bit, yeah. within reason. Within Obviously, reason. if you are concerned, we would recommend regular uh, weight checks. So weigh your animal on a frequent basis, check that you're not dropping body condition. Uh, regular visual health checks and we have done a couple of videos on visual health checks for different species mm -hmm. um, So yeah, use these sorts of things and if you are really concerned then straight up the vets because they're the best people that can say No, it's not just that there are a few other factors you need to be mindful of. Okay, good advice uh, So a lot of these animals particularly the crickets and the locust jump what happens when they do that and they may escape What do we do then? <laughs> yes Yes, they do escape. Um, you know, I would be I would be stood here lying if I hadn't if I said I didn't have never dropped a box of crickets on the floor. Uh, we've all been there. We've all been distracted. We've all had to chase them around the room. <laughs> yes, yes, we have. We've all found them on the bathroom floor two days later as well. You know, it happens. This is part of keeping animals and also the vivariums that we use are generally vented so if you have got um, live food going into the enclosure and your animal's not responding to it straight away there's a possibility that it will let itself out of the enclosure okay <laughs> so don't panic if this happens obviously catch it up as and when you see it um, if you have a cat or even a dog in some cases, they may do the job for you, which is lovely, very helpful, but still a little bit costly for a toy. <laughs> so there we go. But it's just literally a case of being relaxed. There are different bits of equipment out there that can help with catching live food. Um, so you can get some funky tweezers, which have got like clear balls on the end, which if you're not keen on picking them up, oh, okay. some of our owners aren't that keen on the live food. Um, but yeah, I would just go around, scoop them back up, pop them in the tub. Um, you can always put a fresh piece of uh, um, veg in the area that you've dropped the food and they should be drawn to that and you can always pop them back in the tub once they've started feeding. Right, good advice. Thank you for watching Bristol Reptile Emporium's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe 
and we look forward to seeing you next week for another video. Bye!